Hi, it's Becky here. I'm doing part one of a series of tutorials on how to colour different parts of Tilda. When I colour Tilda, I normally do everything first and go back and do all the shading. But just for these purposes, I'm just going to concentrate on the skin for this tutorial. The paper I use for distress markers is Canson Montval cold press paper. Langton cold press paper also works quite well. Um, to start off with, I use a slightly bigger brush that shave and start off with tattered rose. You just need to go on quite roughly, it doesn't really matter how precise you are at this stage because everything gets blended out so make sure your brush is damp, you don't want a wet brush, just a damp brush really. I just have a small amount of water in a cup next to me and I wipe the excess off on an old tea towel. Kitchen roll does fine too. So only for large areas I use the larger brush. For the rest of the skin I use a size 3 brush. Once again just go in the areas that's going to end up being darkest anyway and then blend out. You don't need a lot. This is also the same way for using reinkers or the, the pads. Obviously, if you're colouring with water, you need to have a water-resistant ink. This has been stamped with, stays on, black ink. Let's blend out and then a neck. Right. Next, I'm going to go in with Vintage Photo and just go around. Basically where you put the colour down in the first place, because that's the blitz you're going to want to be darker anyway. And it doesn't matter if you've gone over any of the hair, because you're going to be colouring the hair in so you can hide that. Similarly, if you go out the lines, background colouring can hide all that too. Which is why I, one of the reasons why I like to do my background last. And for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm assuming the light's hitting Tilda straight on, so all of the shadows are going to be around the edges. Just go in the dark bit. Also, while you're doing it, if you just give your brush a quick wipe, it just gets the excess colour off, so you're just blending the colour out, you're not actually adding more colour on. Excuse me, I'm going to be a bit of a cold coming off. And just the dark bits under our chin. And where the flowers are. Right from my brush. If there's any questions, just leave a comment at the end and I'll get back to you. Or my email is beckyheath at gmail.com, which is available on the blog. Right, leave that to dry a little bit. Next, you're going to be going back in with our tattered rose. Starting off with the face, so I'll name my bigger brush. Some people don't use a vintage photo, they use tea dye. But I don't like the colour the vintage photo gives. Just a case of trying everything out and seeing what you actually like best yourself. It's easier to add several layers of lighter colour than trying not to do one layer of dark. It just gives you a bit more control of the depth of colours, the different amount of shading that you actually have. I normally do everything one colour, one layer of colour first. So you have a bit longer for the layers to dry in between. Stop things running, running into each other. Right. Once I've done that, I like to go in and add more shading with walnut stain. 
I find with the distress markers, the browns come out quite green. So for my shade with walnut stain, I actually use the Sestering It Reinkers. You don't need a lot. You're going in the areas that's going to be darker, so around the hairline. And obviously you're not going to be blending as far out as you blended your, wall, your vintage photo. You can hardly anything on my brush. In the corner again. You really should leave a bit longer between layers because you can see as I'm putting it down, it's tending to run into each other as opposed to go down. I just want to smooth everything out there. But for the first that time, once again, I use the size 3 brush. And then we'll go on the arm, that's where we want the, the darker bits to be. This is quite good when you're adding definition to the legs as well, you can get around the kneecaps and under the dress just to give it a bit extra. Extra mention to everything. I'm sorry about having to keep on swiddling it round as well, I can't colour in with it in one place. Also takes away a bit of the vintage photo can sometimes appear a bit orange. So this walnut stain just takes away some of that tinge and adds some more shadows. Again, it's each their own. If you don't like having this on, or you think it's too dark, you don't have to do it. There the flowers. There we are. For her cheeks, you can either use one lipstick, antique linen, not antique linen, sorry, edge mahogany, a combination of the two, or add tattered rose into the mix. It's up to you, really. I'm going to use edge mahogany, and you really don't need a lot of this because it's quite dark. So you just follow where the freckles have been drawn. Quite a dryish brush. Quite nice colour actually, I like using for snow, snowy type tildes with gone nice and rosy from the cold. Yeah, let me go over once more with my, a very dry larger brush just to keep the centre of face. And there is Tilda's skin. Be back with part two with her hair. Thank you. Bye.